Hello everyone. A very good evening to all of you. So today in this session we are going to practice some questions for your upcoming mains examination. Be it RRB PO mains, clerk mains or SPI PO and RTPS PO mains. Okay. So here in this session we are going to solve para jumble plus odd one out question. Okay. Odd sentence out. This is a very important pattern for your mains examination. So all of you who are new to the channel, it's a humble request to you to please subscribe to the channel and also please like the session. Okay, please subscribe to the channel and please like the session. So let's begin now. Okay, so tomorrow we will have our weekly vocabulary marathon session at 11.30 a.m. live. Okay. The link is given in the description box. Please click the link, go to the session and like the session so that you get notified. And uh, the session will not be held on this channel. It will be held on English Seco YouTube channel. Okay, 11.30 a.m. live. And in this session, I will discuss all the important the Hindu vocabulary from this week. Okay, so now let's begin today's questions. This is the question, friends. So, here we have six sentences, okay? Six sentences which are jumbled up. Here we have six sentences which are jumbled up. Out of these six sentences, one sentence does not conform to the theme of the paragraph. This means that one sentence is odd. One sentence is odd sentence. You have to identify the odd sentence and rearrange the rest of the sentences to make a coherent paragraph. So you need to rearrange five sentences to make a coherent paragraph. Okay. So I hope the question is clear to you. Now this is the paragraph. Here we have five sen uh, six sentences and out of them one is odd sentence. Okay. So what we will do is we will go through all the sentences and we will try rearranging them and, and in the process we will find out the odd sentence. Let's see. If China too had multi-party elections, an opposition party and a press free to criticize the government then so many people may not have died in the famine. Okay. So here you can see the usage of the word to. To means what? Also. And you know that in your para jumble, the first sentence should not have such a word. Okay. So this cannot be your first sentence. Clear? Now let's understand the meaning of this sentence. Ki China ke pass bhi agar multi party elections hote, ek opposition party hota, ek media rehta, press rehta, jo government ke criticize kar pata. So, in China, mein famine itne log mare nahi jate. so if China also had many parties like in India, many political parties like in India, an opposition party present and also a press media present that were free to criticize, that had the freedom to criticize the government, then so many people would not have died in the famine, that is shortage of food. Okay. Next, sentence B. China's famine of 1958 to 1961 was the worst recorded famine in the world history. Nearly 3 crore people died in this famine. Okay. So famine means what? Shortage of food. Okay. Shortage of production of food. So China had the worst famine in world history and 3 crore people died in this famine. So this sentence is an independent sentence. This can be your first sentence. Economists think that this was a result of different government policies in the two countries. The existence of democracy in India made the Indian government respond to food scarcity in a way that the Chinese government did not. Okay, So economists think that this was the result. So this, this is what this is used for pointing out. Point out karne ke liye use hota hai, or pointing out. Okay, so your first sentence cannot have such a word. Okay, this is what this is a demonstrative pronoun. Your first sentence cannot have any demonstrative pronoun or any demonstrative adjective. Today's 
Democracy is based on consultation and discussion. A democratic decision always involves many persons, discussions and meetings. So this sentence gives you a definition of the term democracy. Okay. Now this is again an independent sentence. Next. They point out that no large-scale famine has ever taken place in an independent and democratic country. So this sentence says that famine never takes place in an independent and democratic country. At least large-scale famine. Matlab, बहुत ज़्यादा shortage of food नहीं होता है कोई भी independent और democratic country में. Okay, fine. So here you can see that the sentence starts with the pronoun they. Okay. So the sentence starts with a pronoun. This means that this cannot be a first sentence, not an independent sentence. Okay. Next. During those days, India's economic condition was not much better than China. Yet, India did not have a famine of the kind China had. So India's economic condition was not much better than China. It was almost like equal or slightly better than China. But India never faced such a huge famine. Okay, India mein itna zada food shortage nahi hua jitna ki China mein hua tha. Jabki India ke economic condition China se bahut achcha nahi tha. Okay, again you can see that in this sentence those which is again used for pointing out has been used. Okay, demonstrative adjective has been used. So this sentence cannot be a first sentence. Okay. Now let's find out which one is the odd sentence. Now we know that either B or D will be the first sentence because these two sentences are independent sentences. Now it is time that we find out the odd sentence. Okay. If you look at sentence A, sentence A talks about famine. If you look at sentence B, sentence B also talks about famine. If you look at sentence E, sentence E also talks about famine, food scarcity. Sentence E talks about famine. Sentence F again talks about the same thing. Only sentence D gives you the definition of democracy. But here, this paragraph does not require the definition of democracy. This paragraph is not about explaining democracy. Democracy explain karne ka paragraph bhi nahi hai. It is about explaining a situation that happened in China and the situation and that the situation never happened in any democratic and independent country. So the difference between these two system of government. Okay. So this paragraph does not require the definition of this term. So this is your odd sentence. Here sentence D is the odd sentence. Okay. So sentence D here is the odd sentence. Now the question is which of the following is the odd sentence? Your answer is option D. Sentence D is the odd sentence. Okay. Now next question comes which of the following is the pair of the first and the third sentence after rearrangement? पहला और तीसरा सेंटेंस का पेयर आप बताइए रीअरेंज करिए नाउ लेट्स रीअरेंज द सेंटेंसेस क्विकली लेट्स डू इट क्विकली ओके सी नाउ दैट सेंटेंस डी इज गॉन फ्रॉम द पिक्चर बिकॉज दिस इज द ऑर्ड सेंटेंस वी नो दैट सेंटेंस बी इज द फर्स्ट सेंटेंस ओके सो वी कीप बी इन द बिगिन so China's famine of 1958 and 1961 was the worst recorded famine in world history. Nearly 3 crore people died in this famine. This is our first sentence. Now this first sentence, sentence B talks about a time period. 1958 to 1961. This is what? This is a time period. And if you look at sentence F, then sentence F points at that time, during those days. So which days? This one, 1958 to 1961. So it points at this time period. That's why F should come after sentence B. Okay. F mein kaha gaya hai un dino. Un dino matlab kaun se din? 1958 se leke 1961 tak. Thik hai? So, इसीलिए F आ जाएगा B के बाद, 
Okay, now we have arranged B and F. Okay. Yet India did not take a famine of the kind China had. Fine. Now, Q, why India did not have a famine? Why? Now the question comes why? The answer is given in sentence C. Economists think that this was a result of different government policies in the two countries. So this is the answer. This was a result. What was the result? This one. That India did not have a famine but China had. So this was a result of different government policies in the two countries. So which two countries? India and China. The existence of democracy in India made the Indian government respond to food scarcity in a way the Chinese government did not. So the response of Indian government was better than the Chinese government. So C should come after F. Okay. Now, if you look at sentence E, sentence E has this pronoun they. So here there is a noun pronoun pair. Economists is the noun and they is the pronoun, noun pronoun pair. Okay. They point out that no large scale famine has ever taken place in an independent and democratic country. So who point out? They here refers to economists. Okay, so E comes after C. Fine. Now the concluding sentence that if China too had multi-party elections, then this then so many people may not have died in the famine. Okay, so this is the concluding statement. Okay. China too had now China is being compared with India. That India had a multi-party, uh, like India had multi-party elections, there was democracy in India. If China too had multi-party elections, then this wouldn't have happened. So B, F, C, E, A is the complete arrangement. B, F, C, E, A. B, F, C, E, A. Now the question is, identify the pair of the first and the third sentence. So first sentence is B and third sentence is C. So your answer is B, C, which is option B. Okay, I hope this is clear. If it is not clear, then please watch the video once again. Next. Yes. Now again, same pattern. So let's uh, solve the next question. The African National Congress was the umbrella organization that led the struggle against the policies of segregation. Okay. So, African National Congress was the umbrella organization that led the struggle against the policies of segregation. Segregation means differentiation. So, this part, uh, this party or this um, organization struggled or, you know, opposed differentiation. Okay. This is an independent sentence. Next. Apartheid was the name of a system of racial discrimination unique to South Africa. Now, apartheid was what? It is. It was a racial discrimination, discriminating people on the basis of race. And this system was unique to South Africa, means it was prevalent only in South Africa, okay? So, again, this is an independent sentence. Besides these two groups, there were people of mixed races who were called colored and people who migrated from India. So there were two groups and besides these two groups, that is apart from these two groups, there were other people also who belonged to mixed races and they were called colored. And also people from India were called colored. Okay. Now these two, besides these two groups, so the question comes which two groups. Now again you can see that here a demonstrative adjective has been used. Okay, something has been used which is, which is for pointing out. Also, the sentence starts with besides. Now, if your sentence starts with besides, then it cannot be your first sentence. So, this is not an independent sentence. Sentence D says, but unlike India, a large number of whites had settled in South Africa and became the local rulers. The system of apartheid divided the people and labeled them on the basis of their skin color. Now, a lot in India, white people are not there, but... Uh, here in South Africa, you can see a, num a large number of white people settled there and they became the rulers. And the system of apartheid divided the people based on the skin color. Okay, so the discrimination was based on skin color. Matlab skin color dekke logo ko judge kiya jata tha, logo ko differentiate kiya jata tha, alag kiya jata tha. So here the sentence starts with a connector, but if your sentence starts with a connector, then that cannot be your first sentence, okay? 
Next, the white Europeans imposed this system on South Africa. During the 17th and 18th century, the trading companies from Europe occupied it with arms and force in the way they occupied India. Okay, so here the white Europeans uh, imposed, that is they started or they forced the system on South Africa and during the 17th and 18th century, the trading companies, that is the business companies from Europe occupied South Africa with arms, that is using ammunition, using weapons and using force. In the same way, they occupied India. So here you can see again the usage of demonstrative adjective this. So this cannot be your first sentence. Also, you can see uh, here the usage of this pronoun it has been made. Now we do not know the noun for this pronoun it. So this cannot be your first sentence. Incorrect. Let's go to the next one. The native people of South Africa are black in color. They made up about three-fourths of the population and were called blacks. So the local people of South Africa, their skin color was black. They occupied 75% of the population and they were called blacks. Okay. Now this sentence is also independent. Okay. So here we have three independent sentences and we have to choose judiciously which one will be the first sentence. Okay. Now, look, here if you read the entire, read all the uh, sentences, you can see sentence B talks about apartheid, which is a racial discrimination. This sentence talks about racial discrimination. Okay. Sentence C again talks about discrimination. There were people of mixed races, colored and people from India again about race. Again, race. A large number of whites had settled in South Africa. The system of apartheid divided the people and labeled them on the basis of skin color. So again, skin color and apartheid. Okay. The white Europeans imposed this system. So which system? The system of apartheid. The native people of South Africa are black in color. So again, here the concept of skin color comes. So if you can see that sentence F talks about the concept of skin color. Sentence E talks about apartheid, that is discrimination based on race, skin color. Sentence D talks about skin color and apartheid. Sentence C again talks about skin color. Sentence B talks about apartheid. Okay. But sentence A talks about an organization. Here our focus is not any organization, but our focus is the discrimination that happened during that time. So sentence A is the odd sentence over here. Okay. So here is the sentence A ho gaya humara odd sentence. This is the odd sentence because this sentence talks about an organization. Yes, I know that it talks about segregation as well, but here the main focus is this organization. Okay. So this is our odd sentence. Now let's uh, come to the questions part. Let's go to the questions and understand. The first question is, which of the following is the odd sentence? Odd sentence kaun sa hai? So sen odd sentence is sentence A. So our answer is option E. Sentence A is the odd sentence. Next question, which of the following is the pair of the second and the fourth sentence after rearrangement? So now you need to rearrange the paragraph. So here we know that sentence B and sentence F, these two sentences are independent sentences, okay? But you, you can see that sentence B here introduces the paragraph by giving the definition of the term apartheid. So sentence B will be the first sentence, okay? Now apartheid is, a, is what? This is a system. It is a system, okay? And sentence E points at that system by using the term this system. The white Europeans imposed this system on South Africa. So here, this system means the system which is introduced in sentence B, apartheid. So E will come after sentence B. Okay. So the white Europeans imposed this system on South Africa during the 17th and 18th century. The trading companies from Europe occupied it with arms and force. It means what? Here it refers to South Africa. Again, there is a noun pronoun pair as well. 
This is the noun and this is the pronoun. With arms and force in the way they occupy India. Okay, fine. So we have arranged B and E. Okay. Now here they, you can see that there is a, you know, the, uh, the author is trying to make a link, create a link between India and South Africa. That white Europeans occupied South Africa in the same way they occupied India. So in the next sentence, we will compare the situation between these two countries. Okay. But unlike India, a large number of whites had settled in South Africa and became the local rulers. The system of apartheid divided the people and label, labeled them on the basis of their skin color. So here there is a comparison. Okay, that unlike India, in South Africa, many whites had settled. So D will come after sentence E. Okay, now you can see here, sentence D talks about you know, some skin color. Which, to, which skin color? Whites. Unlike India, large number of whites had settled. Okay. So, sentence D talks about the skin color white. And sentence C say, talks about two groups. Besides these two groups. But sentence D talks only about one group that is white. So, in the next sentence, you have to talk about the next group which is black. Okay. So, sentence F talks about the group which is black. The native people of South Africa are black in color. They made up about three-fourth of the population and were called blacks. So, here black ke baare mein baat kiya gaya hai. Dekhiye. Sentence uh, D, if you look at it, it is only white ke baare mein baat yaha pe kiya gaya hai. And sentence C is saying that it is two groups. Two groups. Two groups. So, white ke baare mein agar baat kiya gaya hai, to ye hai group number one. So, group number two kaun sa hai? Group number two hai black ka group. So, F a jayega D ke baad. So, F should come after D. And after that, you can talk about two groups. Besides these two groups, there were people of mixed races who were called colored. Okay. So, C will come after F. Okay. So, B, E, D, F, C is the complete arrangement. Ab mai isko hindi mein ek baar quickly explain kar dungi theek hai apartheid kya hai sentence b aapka first sentence ho jayega kyunki ye apartheid ka definition bata raha hai apartheid ek system hai racial discrimination ka jo south africa mein hi bas chalta hai sentence e mein dekhiye this system use kiya gaya hai jo is apartheid ke system ko point out kar raha hai isliye e aa jayega sentence b ke baad Sentence D में अगर आप देखे, अगर आप sentence E देखे, तो sentence E में ना last में South Africa के साथ India का एक comparison, एक similarity draw करने का कोशिश किया गया है, okay? तो ये similarity क्या है? कि जैसे Europe India को occupy किया था, वैसे ही Europe ने South Africa को भी occupy कर लिया. तो यहाँ पे India और South Africa के बीच में एक similarity draw करने का कोशिश किया गया था. तो next sentence में हम बताएंगे, India or South Africa mein difference kya hai aur wo hum log batayenge but connected use karke contradictory connected to yahan pe similarity bataya gaya hai aur yahan pe difference bataya ja raha hai is tarike se but connected use karke contradictory connected use karke ki lekin India ke tarah nahi hai South Africa kyunki South Africa mein bahut sare white log bhi settled hai to isliye D mein a D a gaya E ke baad aur E aur D connected hai but use karke Okay, D में अब देखिए सिर्फ white लोगों के बारे में बात किया गया है और अगर आप C देखें तो C में दो group के बारे में बात किया गया है तो D में white लोगों के बारे में बात किया गया है तो ये हो गया group number one तो group number two कौन सा है group number two है black तो black के बारे में अब आपको बात करना है तो black क्या है South Africa में जो native लोग हैं वो हैं black उनको blacks कहा जाता है तो F आ गया D के बाद अब कहा जा रहा है कि इन दोनों ग्रुप के अलावा मतलब D में व्हाइट है, F में ब्लैक है, इन दोनों ग्रुप के अलावा भी और एक ग्रुप है जो कि है मिक्स्ड ग्रुप, जिसको कलर्ड कहा जाता है। तो आ गया C, B E D F C आपका कंप्लीट अरेंजमेंट है। B E D F C। So what is the question? The question is which of the following is the pair of the second and the fourth sentence? So the second sentence is E and the fourth sentence is F. So E F First, second, third, fourth. E F. यहाँ पे options गलत हैं, तो यहाँ पे क्या हो जाएगा answer आपका E F हो जाएगा, ठीक है? 
आंसर हो जाएगा ई एफ तो यहाँ पे मैं खत्म करूंगी आज का सेशन आई होप आपको अच्छा लगा होगा सेशन आज का और याद रखना कल सुबह साढ़े ग्यारह बजे वोकेबुलरी का मैराथन सेशन है सुबह साढ़े ग्यारह बजे जहाँ पे पूरे हफ्ते के द हिंदू वोकेबुलरी का डिस्कशन होगा तो कल जरूर साढ़े ग्यारह बजे अटेंड कीजिए और इसके इस सेशन का लिंक आपको नीचे डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में मिल जाएगा थैंक यू सो मच फ्रेंड्स